Let's see some breaking news coming from the New York City courts. Judge Juan Marchand, who has been the presiding judge over former President Trump's so-called hush money case, has made a determination that he is not going to go ahead with the September 18th sentencing date for the former president, that it will be delayed until after the election. Uh, this had been a really fraught decision yeah. for this judge because people had observed, Sandra, that if he had have gone ahead with the sentencing, then uh, the former president could have accused him of meddling in an election. And if he decided to uh, delay the sentencing until after the election, no doubt he would get uh, hit by a lot of accusations that he was uh, acting in uh, Donald Trump's political interests as opposed to in the interests of justice. But the uh, breaking news coming to us just a couple of minutes ago, Judge Juan Mershon, the presiding judge in the so-called hush money case with Stormy Daniels, uh, has decided to delay the sentencing for the former president until after the November election. This is a big decision, Sandra. Obviously, the implications of the timing is huge, considering the upcoming election, November 26, many, many days and weeks uh, after Election Day. So this just in, and we're going to get brand new reactions shortly. Obviously, we're talking about the judge overseeing uh, former President Donald Trump's hush money trial. Um, this has obviously taken center stage to many other cases we've been watching this week. But the sentencing now, uh, John, delayed to November 26, as we learn brand new details. Uh, you know, the, the former president was speaking to this just a little while ago at his uh, New York City Trump uh, Tower headquarters, uh, saying that uh, this was a, a deal, that there was nothing uh, that was wrong with it uh, legally. Now, don't forget that the uh, Manhattan district attorney decided to bootstrap that case, which would have been a misdemeanor, to the commission of, or possible commission, of a federal crime, election interference, or, or at least affecting the outcome of, of an election and uh, turned that into a felony. And in doing that, he got around the statute of limitations, uh, and uh, the jury came back with the verdict that the former president was guilty on all counts. But he will not, we're not going to learn about uh, the penalty that will be imposed in this case, if a penalty is imposed at all, until sometime after the election. And if the former president wins the election, Sandra, that could potentially change the outcome of literally everything. Um, all right, if you're just tuning in now, we just got word that the judge in this hush money case has delayed former President Donald mm -hmm. Trump's hush money sentencing until after the election. You can see the date on your screen there is November 26. John, um, just looking at the court document here and making my way through it to see if there's any further details that would be pertinent, but obviously the news is that this will be happening after the election. Uh, John, there will obviously be political debate and conversation around this in the coming days and weeks. Yeah, there's no question. Again, as I said, the, um, the decision by the judge was uh, fraught, uh, and he probably was going to face criticism no matter what uh, decision he made. Again, if he had decided to go ahead with the sentencing and uh, even sentenced uh, former President Trump to jail time, which a lot of people thought mm -hmm. would be the outcome of this, then there would be a great hue and cry from the Trump campaign and his supporters that this was the judicial system interfering in politics, but that if he waited, he would probably get um, a, a, a lot of criticism uh, from Democrats saying, well, wait a second, uh, this was supposed to be um, examining the rule of law and, and carrying out the rule of law, not taking into consideration the political fortunes of a, of a, uh, of a presidential candidate. Uh, joining us now by phone is Jonathan Turley. Jonathan, jump on in here on the breaking news as the former president, we know, as we learned weeks ago, uh, moved to delay the sentencing for this hush money scheme until after Election Day, and it looks like the judge has decided to do so. Your reaction? Yes, and uh, forgive the bells in the background. Huh. I'm on campus. It's, it's not signaling this opinion. Uh, the, the decision is not surprising in two respects. One is... It was always controversial to have the sentencing before the election. And the judge clearly did not feel comfortable that he was ready to do so. But the second reason is the reason for that discomfort. The Supreme Court decision presented some very serious questions about this trial. And the judge knew he would be subject to an appellate review. It's clear that parts of the trial did run afoul of the Supreme Court decision. He allowed testimony of people like Hope Hicks to be entered, and that clearly fell within uh, the privileged 
uh, aspect of the immunity decision. So he has to essentially get this cat to walk backwards. He has got to try to find a way that that evidence could be excluded, but the ultimate outcome be accepted. That's not as easy as people suggest. And he's got to create a record for that that can withstand appellate review. So I think that the judge here is following the most cautious possible approach mm -hmm. to say, let's hold off. Um, it'll give me more time to look at the implications of this and let's yeah, proceed that, right? after the election. So in terms of proceeding after the election, it looks like the new sentencing date is set for November the 26th. But let's not forget, Professor, that just before then, on November the 12th, uh, which is seven days after the election, uh, the judge is going to make a decision on, on a motion to vacate the conviction because of the Supreme Court's decision on presidential immunity. So do you think that that, that date, that November 12th date, also played into Mershon's decision here? I think it does. I think that all of this is being weighed together. I think that he believes that he can deal with the full range of issues here in terms of the sensing issues, but also the continued viability of the conviction itself uh, in uh, November. I think all of those things, uh, they're, they're insular questions, but they're related to some extent. And the fact is that the judge said earlier, a sentencing, if necessary, reflected the fact that he understands that there might not be any sentencing because there might not be any conviction. If he decides mm -hmm. that uh, the evidence in the trial corrupted the outcome. Now, many people are betting he will not reach that conclusion, but then he has to say why it did not corrupt the outcome, why it didn't taint the verdict. Hope Hicks and some of the uh, evidence coming out of the White House at the trial must have had an impact on that jury. And she gave this very tearful testimony that uh, received a lot of attention. And the prosecutors made reference to it in their closing argument. So you can't really separate these issues. I think that Mershon uh, is giving himself a little bit of cushion of time. So he, makes sure, he will make sure that when he issues all of these rulings, uh, he's ready for an appellate review. Um, to that point, just reading through the letter, um, from the judge, signed by the judge, in reference to the defendant requesting an adjournment of his sentencing um, that was currently scheduled for September 18th, as we all know, until after the presidential election. The judge says he argues the adjournment is necessary to provide adequate time to assess and pursue appellate options in the event this court denies his pending criminal procedure law and to avoid the potential politically prejudicial impact that a public sentencing could have on him and his prospects in the upcoming election. Um, he goes on further and, by the way, signs this letter where he ultimately makes this decision, saying this is not a decision the court makes lightly, but is the decision which is the court, in the court's view, best advances the interests of justice, Jonathan. Yeah, it's a sort of an ironic passage because I, many of us questioned the rush to have these trials and proceedings before the election. And Mershon was largely unsympathetic uh, with arguments coming from the Trump team uh, that he was gagging the leading candidate for the presidency and pulling him into a courtroom for a long uh, trial uh, when he was supposed to be out on the campaign trail. So it's a different tenor coming out in this letter than the one that he, uh, that he that was previously heard in court. I think that he's making the right decision. You know, this is going to be a historic decision either way. But more importantly, he knows that every part of his decisions on these issues will be reviewed jot for jot by the appellate court and possibly the Supreme Court. And so he's going to take more time try to get it right, and try not to have this, this clock running artificially uh, set by uh, the, the presidential campaign. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilmeade. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.